Hi everyone, this is Miss Tom with Lesson 9.1.2, How Can I Use Inequalities? So students will be developing their skills of solving linear one variable inequalities by doing the example work that we have today. Alright, so let's go over how solving inequalities. Basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out how many solutions does it have and where does it have those solutions. So first, we're going to do this. We're going to slice it. Then what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and isolate the variable by adding 7 to both sides. What I do to one, we do to the other. We know this. Then we're going to go ahead and draw our zero pair. We've got x is less than. That's a less than symbol because it has a looks like a L. And we've got 5. And so we've got x isolated. So we say x is less than 5. All right, and then going ahead and we're going to do this. This is kind of what we learned last time, so that's why I'm going over kind of quickly. x is less than 5, so we circle 5. Do we fill it in? No, we don't fill it in because it's not equal to 5. And what are numbers less than 5? All of these are less than 5. And they're all located on the left-hand side. Looks like that. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look at what this means. Remember, this means those are the possible solutions for x. So those are the only things that x can equal to. OK? So now we're going to talk about the right-hand side. We've got an equation. An equation we do know how to do. We're going to slice it. Then we're going to go ahead and isolate m. Which side has more m values? It's going to be the right-hand side. So we're going to go ahead and take away 3m from both sides. We're going to notice that this makes a zero pair. It goes by. Drawing our line, we've got 2 is equal to 5m minus 8. Then with the minus 8, we're going to go ahead and add 8 to both sides. This is going to be a 0 pair. Get that out of there. We've got 10 is equal to 5m. And then lastly, we are going to go ahead and divide by that 5 because it's multiplied by m. And then we get m is equal to 2. All right, so since m is equal to 2, we're going to go m is equal to 2. We've got this. And what does our inequality look like? Well, m is equal to 2, so we're going to circle 2. We're going to ask ourselves, is m equal to 2? Yes, it is. Is there any other value that m is equal to? No. There's only one value m is equal to. m can only be 2. All right, so m can only be 2. That's why that's what it looks like. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and continue on. Here we go. Going over some inequalities. I have my work from here before. Let's go ahead and look at it. All right, everybody. Again, if you want to, try out the problems on your own, unpause, and then when you're ready, look to see if you have the right answers. So let's go ahead and talk about this one. We're going to slice it. We're going to isolate that variable by adding two to both sides. What I do to one side, do to the other. This is going to be a zero pair. It gets out. And we are left with 2p over 3 greater than 2, but it's negative. Why is it negative? Because negative 4 plus positive 2 is negative 2. Now the next thing we do is we're going to notice that there's a 3 in the denominator. A 3 in the denominator means it's divided by 3. And when you're dividing by 3, we need to do the opposite of dividing by 3, which is multiplying by 3. We do to one side, we do to the other. This 
is going to cancel out. So then we end up with 2p is greater than negative 2 times 3 would be negative 6. Then we're going to go ahead and divide by 2. Do to one side, do to the other. Then we get p is greater than negative 6 divided by 2 would be negative 3. Box our answer, and there we go. So we go p is greater than negative 3. So we're going to write that in inequality form. p is greater than negative 3. Negative 3 is here. Do we fill it in? Nope. But we do say it's greater than negative 3. What are values that are greater than negative 3? All of these here. And so our inequality, ah, inequality looks like this. Okay. And again, what does this mean? This means these are all the possible solutions for P. All right. Next thing, let's continue. Actually, I want to make this a little better. There we go. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so we've got this one. This one, again, is a little tricky. We're going to need to draw a line here. Noticing a couple of things. This is 2. The minus 3 is what's going to need to be distributed. So it goes here. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Over here, negative 3 times negative 1. A negative times a negative is a positive, and it's negative 3, so it should be positive 3. Got our inequality here. And a pro tip is to always make x positive. So how you do that is you figure out which side has more x's. This side has more x's. So how do we do that? That looks like move. I'm going to rewrite that. <laughs> okay. More. How do we do that? Well, we're going to go ahead and add 3x to both sides. This is going to get out of the way by over here. We've got 2 plus 3, which is 5. The inequality is here. We've got x plus 3x, which is 4x minus 7. Instead of subtracting 7, we are going to go ahead and add it because that is going to give us a 0 pair. Then this goes out of the way, 0 pair that out. 5 plus 7 would be 12. Inequality is here. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and divide by 4. And so we get 3 here, inequality, and then an x. And so how are we going to write that? We're going to say, well, first of all, which one's greater, 3 or x? The inequality is facing 3, right? So that means 3 is greater than or equal to x. Another way of saying that is x is less than or equal to 3. So... Sorry guys, that was a little messy, but here we go. X is less than or equal to 3. Since it's less than or equal to 3, we're going to circle 3. Since it's less than or equal to, we're going to fill it in. And which direction is it going to be in? Well, what are numbers that are less than 3? Is 4 less than 3? Is 5 less than 3? No, none of those are less than 3. What's less than 3? 2 is less than 3. 1 is less than 3. All of these are less than 3. So we're going to point it into this direction. And once again, what does this mean? These mean possible solutions for y. Or, I'm sorry, for y, for, for x. <laughs> possible solutions for x. Got it? Great. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so one thing that I mentioned earlier, I was like, pro tip, make x always positive. 
you really don't want to make x negative. The reason why is look right here. Do you see how x is negative? I really want you to avoid this because what ends up happening is this. You know you're going to have to divide by negative 3 to both sides. And so you get x is, and then this negative 2 is here. When you divide by a negative, like right here, do you see how we divided by a negative? When you divide by a negative, it's actually going to make something happen. When you divide by a negative, you actually have to switch the inequality sign. What do I mean by that? You need to make this sign in the middle instead of face this way, face this way. So well, that's a rule for dividing by negatives. So that's why I'm like, just avoid it. Just make x positive so that you don't have to divide by a negative, okay? Now, I know what you're thinking. Why? Why is it when you divide by a negative, also when you multiply by a negative, it makes you change the sign? Why do you change the inequality? So the reason why you change the inequality is because when we have a regular situation, like for example, if we have five and two, you agree with me that five is greater than two, right? And if I add three to both sides, that's, that's still okay, right? This is still a true statement, yeah? What if I subtract 1 to both sides? Is this still a true statement? Yes, it is. Those are all true statements. However, when we do something like this, where we're not subtracting, we're not adding, instead, we are dividing. Let's divide by a negative. Then it becomes negative 5 and neg negative 2. Is negative 5 greater than 2? Negative 2? No, it's not. Because we divided by negative, we have to switch the sign. So with that logic, I just kind of want to make sure you guys understand. Just don't deal with the negatives and just kind of make it so that x is positive. So you're probably thinking, like, what do you mean by that, Miss Tom? I'll show you. So right here, most people, when they're solving B, let's look at B now. When they're solving B, they're thinking, okay, I can just subtract 4, get negative 2x is greater than 4. Then I'm going to divide by negative 2. But I have to remember that since I divided by negative 2, I need to make this change to inequality needs to be flipped. That's one way of thinking about it. You've got to flip that inequality. Or you could do this. So this is the other way. Okay? That way you don't have to flip the inequality. So you could do this where you're like, okay, I'm going to add 2x to make x positive, okay? Then we're going to notice this goes by over here. We've got 4 is greater than 8 plus 2m, or not 2m, 4 is greater than 8 plus 2x. Then we're going to subtract by 8. This goes away. We're at negative 4 here. Here's 2x. Then divide by 2, divide by 2. And as you can see, you don't need to switch the inequality. And there it is. Now, if you're somebody that's like, you know what? I don't mind dividing by the negative. I will remember to change that inequality. Okay, do it. But if not, I recommend that you just kind of make x positive so that you don't have to worry about, do I need to switch the inequality or not? Okay? 
All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do one more example. All right, and here is our one more example. We're going to go ahead and draw our line. All right, over here, we've got, to combine our like terms, we've got 9k minus 3, and then we've got our inequality here. Then we've got 2k, oh, that's also 9k, hmm, minus 3. Then what we're going to go ahead and we're going to notice, that's, do you notice something? You notice that this is the same as this. When you have exactly the same thing on both sides, what can you say happens? What can you say happens? This is going to be, we add 3 to both sides. This is going to be a zero pair, zero pair that out, 9k, here's another 9k, then we're going to subtract 9k from both sides, we get zero and zero, so remember when we saw this? This means there are infinite solutions, since there are infinite solutions that means everything is highlighted, all of these things. That means x can be anything, anything possible. And you're going to notice that's kind of the same thing we have here. Y, 3y plus 1, 3y plus 1. It's exactly the same. So when we do all of this process, where we kind of get rid of everything, you're going to notice that all the solutions are possible because you've got zero and zero on both sides, which is infinite solutions, which is here. All right. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys for the next video. Make sure to get your homework done, and I'll see you guys next time.